I'll be teaching you the subject machine design. Okay. In this lecture, we will discuss what is the subject machine design. Okay. What is the use of this subject? Why we need to study machine design as a mechanical engineer? Okay. I'll be telling you the marks of uh, the marks, the percentage marks of the uh, machine design subject in the gate examination. Okay. And after this lecture, we'll be discussing some fundamental concept. Okay, which belongs to the subject of strength of material and that concepts will be very useful for this particular subject. Okay, I will be telling you the sign convention which we are going to follow. Okay, that in different theory of failure in different topics you will be seeing there, need, there is a need of proper sign convention. So, what kind of sign convention we are going to use I will be telling you that. Okay, so let us start what is machine design. In this particular subject a mechanical engineer is supposed to calculate the dimensions of a mechanic of a machine component okay in order to carry some load in order to bear some load what is essential the dimensions of a component is very essential okay so what we will be doing based on some strength criteria okay we will be designing a component the load may be fluctuating or load may be static i'll be telling you later on that what is a static load or what is a fluctuating load okay so under different loading condition different types of stresses will be produced and then for that particular stress condition, we will be, we'll be judging the component, we will be deciding the failure criteria and based on those failure criteria, we will be suggesting the permissible load or the permissible dimensions. Okay, so that is the use of this subject. So here we are using a fundamental concepts of strength of materials also. Okay, in, in strength of material, we was uh, we were you know uh, not using the uh, load conditions like stat, uh, like fluctuating loads or dynamic loads were, were not there. But in subject of machine design, mostly we will be, we'll be dealing with the fluctuating load that is the loads whose magnitude and direction may vary with respect to time. But whereas in case of strength of material, the load was static, its, its magnitude and the direction of the load was constant. Okay? So in machine design, in machine design what we will be doing, we will be deciding the permissible dimension calculation for calculation for permissible permissible dimension and load okay this calculation is the part of machine design clear now you have seen in strength of material if i am i am testing a particular component made up of a certain material okay we are describing describing this strength based on some test like the test performed on the ultimate tensile testing machine UTM. Okay, there was a component, it may be a brittle material, it may be a ductile material, we perform some test, we just predict that at which point the material is going to fail or it is going to fracture. Okay, so in machine design, we will be discussing about the failure of a component. Okay, we will be, ju we'll be judging the component based on the failure, the mode of failure. Okay, uh, what kind of failure it is going to uh, give, like it is going to give excessive plastic deformation or it is going to give a permanent rupture. Based on that criteria, we will be judging the component and we will be suggesting the required dimensions and the permissible loads. Okay? Now the machine design is majorly focused on the failure of component. Okay? So we have to calculate the permissible dimension and load such that, such that the component, the component or say machine component must not, must not fail. Okay? Now, so basically we are avoiding failure. So it is very essential to understand the term failure. Okay. So what does it mean by failure? It is very essential to understand. Failure is described okay, based on what type of task you have assigned to a particular component. Okay. If you are wearing a shirt, okay, after, a, after some time, Maybe it is out of fashion, maybe it is not giving a particular fit okay? or just you are not just comfortable or it is, it is worn out, you will not be using that particular shirt. So based on your requirement, the failure is defined. Okay? So if a component is not able to perform under the guidelines of the designer, then the component is said to be failed. Okay? If it is not able to perform well, if it is not able to withstand the condition, if it is not able 
to resist the load to bear the load it is said to be failed okay so failure is majorly divided in two categories okay that is deformation or you can say excessive deformation so excessive deformation is also considered as failure and rupture that is breakage okay now let's talk about excessive deformation if you have a certain component let us say you have a nut and bolt arrangement is there okay there are various loads okay now if you are applying load on that particular member and the bolts are getting stretched okay so there are two possibilities the stretching okay that is the deformation may be elastic it may be plastic okay so it is considered that the deformation must be elastic it should not be plastic so that after removal of the load the component must regain its initial shape and size but the problem is if the elastic deformation is there but the deformation or you can say the scale of deformation is very high in that situation also you cannot use that component okay like this if there is a plate okay if there is a plate and there is another plate in overlapping condition like this like this okay you are applying some load a tensile load is there let us say and there is a bolt just try to understand the situation now when you are pulling apart the plates what will happen there will be some deformation due to different stresses now if the deformation is within the elastic limit okay then what may happen after removing the load this plate which is carrying a bolt is going to regain its shape the bolt is also going to regain its shape but consider a situation where this load is fluctuating okay then what may what will happen the size of the hole and the size of the bolt will vary okay and due to excessive deformations due to vibrations okay this will not be able to uh, withstand the condition this will not be able to perform properly okay so due to excessive deformation what will happen after some time you will be able to see that the bolts and nut arrangement are not that tight not that much fixed in that position the loosening of the bolts will occur so there is no plastic deformation there is no rupture but due to excessive plastic deformation the bolt has lost its its tightness clear so under such condition when you are not able to use a component because it is giving very very large elastic deformation during operation that is also considered as a failure so you can clearly see that failure means if the component is not able to satisfy your needs whatever you want from that particular component it is not going to perform like that then you can say that this particular component has failed okay so the deformation or excessive deformation can be categorized in two ways first is excessive elastic deformation elastic deformation and excessive excessive plastic deformation although plastic deformation must not occur but in some cases it is avoidable okay but if it is a if it is in large extent then you must you must repair or replace that particular component so i think you got my point about the excessive pl plastic and elastic deformation okay in plastic deformation what will happen when you are going to apply a load okay the component is going to deform and the load is such that it will not going to regain its original shape and size okay so that will be uh, plastic deformation now rupture rupture means permanent breakage okay the component will break apart okay and the only option you have is to replace the component okay so we discussed what is failure how failure is defined and all okay now the problem with the term failure is that whatever we have learned in the subject of strength of material tells us about a term that is a strength a strength is the maximum value of a stress which a component can carry without failure okay so if i am talking about the strength of a component the strength of component the things will be different the strength of a material and strength of a component are two different things let us discuss okay if i am talking about the strength okay 
so what is this this is the maximum stress maximum stress a component a component can carry carry without without failure okay so this definition suggests that if you have a material let us say we have a rod of steel let us say we have a rod of steel this is a steel rod okay having a diameter d1 okay this is a steel rod we have another steel rod also it is of steel but the diameter is d2 okay and d2 is higher than d1 let us say now if you go through this definition okay of strength strength is same for the both components okay as both are made up of steel and let us assume that bo both are same uh, you know uh, same standard of steel okay now as if the chemical composition is same for both so definitely the strengths will be same so sut that is the ultimate tensile strength for this and for this will be same so sut1 and let us say this sut2 so sut1 will be equal to sut2 okay sut2 clear but even if you don't have any idea about the term strength okay you are just a common person and one may come and ask you that sir this is a shaft okay this is another shaft it is having a diameter d1 it is having diameter d2 and the d2 that is second shaft is larger as compared to the first shaft which is stronger so definitely you will answer the shaft which is having larger diameter the rod which is having larger diameter is strong okay so this comes from this particular idea that if a component is large in size it is going to carry more load okay so that's why in machine design subject we will be describing the strength of the component in terms of the load carrying capacity because if two components are made up of same material their strength will be equal as long as the chem chem chemical composition of those members are same their strength that is the maximum stress they can carry will be equal okay so based on such criteria we will not be able to describe the condition of failure okay so if the condition of failure for a particular component is easier to describe when we are describing the load carrying capacity so in machine designing as i told you we will be calculating for the permissible dimension and the permissible load that is the permissible load is nothing but the load carrying capacity the maximum load which a component can carry without failure and what is the idea behind this the idea is same as this okay if we are going to apply if we are going to apply a maximum load due to that particular load the induced stresses must not cross the value of the ultimate stresses that is the strength of the material so here what we are doing <coughs> sorry the induced stresses the induced stresses must be less than or equal to the strength this is the this is the fundamental idea strength of material okay so whatever is the dimension of your component whatever is the material of your component the induced stresses due to the external load must not exceed the strength of that material okay clear but in this particular idea what will happen if you have two shaft like this okay it is having a larger diameter then we need larger load okay so that the stresses in this situation will be equal to this equation okay let us write here the stress is sigma 1 equal to equal to p1 by a1 okay here the induced stresses is sigma 2 is equal to p2 by a2 both are having same both are having same strength okay so this must be less than this is induced stress so this must be or less uh, this must be less than or equal to sut also here this value sigma 2 must be less than or equal to sut okay now as you can see that d2 is greater than d1 so definitely a2 is a2 is greater than a1 okay so for limiting condition you can see p1 okay p1 is equal to what p1 is equal to sigma 1 into a put limiting condition sigma 1 will become equal to sut so sut into a1 okay and here p2 will be equal to sut into a2 as a2 is greater than a1 you can clearly see that p2 is greater than p1 so it is going to it is going to carry more load 
okay that's why just remember that in machine designing mostly we will be calculating the load carrying capacity if it is a device okay which is transmitting torque so load will be the torque okay like in case of clutches we are going to transmit the torque so we will be discussing the torque carrying capacity so whatever the case is in machine designing we are will not be going to use the maximum permissible strength stress as the uh, uh, as the you, uh, the outcome of the calculation this will be used for the calculation definitely as this is an engineering practice this is an engineering practice and here definitely the failure is described by this statement that induces stresses must, must not in, uh, exceed the strength of the material okay so stresses and the dif and different strength of the materials will be used for the calculation but the outcome which we want is the load carrying capacity so this is fundamental difference between the subject machine design and the strength of material so if anybody ask you that what is the difference between machine design and strength of material so you should be able to answer that sir in machine design we are going to describe we are going to give the outcome okay like the permissible dimensions that is the minimum dimensions which should be there to carry the load okay and if you know the dimension then we will go going to uh, we will going to tell you the maximum load carrying capacity that is how much load you can apply on that particular component so this was about the introduction of machine design now let's let's get into the point so in gate examination if i say in gate examination it is going to have an average of 4 marks okay average four, 4 marks are there it may vary okay it may be also of 6 marks it may be of 2 marks but from last 20 years or 30 years if you see the pattern you can calculate the average of that subject and this is 4 marks approximately okay so you should give proper attention to the subject it is very important subject as a mechanical engineer it is very interesting subject also okay the concepts are very easy to understand there are mostly procedures are there which you have to follow in order to solve any kind of problem okay so it is very easy subject you can say it is very easy subject and also it take less time for preparing okay so i hope that you will be uh, engaged in the lectures you will involve with me i will i'll be telling you different core concepts which are essential for gate examinations okay and the content i'm going to provide you is also going to have you in different examination like isro and engineering services also okay thank you very much